first into the tank is a customized version of a bedtime essential. I'm Susanna. I'm Kevin, and we're seeking $400,000 for a 5% equity stake in our company, Pluto Pillow. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Another pillow company? Well, yes, but thankfully, here at Pluto, we do things differently. See, finding the perfect pillow can be so amazing, but finding the right pillow for you can also be super hard. Here's how it usually goes. While shopping online, you're faced with an overwhelming number of options that can be hard to compare with one another. And with tens of thousands of search results, how do you know which would work best for you? In stores, is it better to squeeze pillows with your hands or should you awkwardly place your head on the dirty display pillows? The answer is both suck. Well, with Pluto, there's a better way. Pluto is a custom pillow company that custom builds pillows to you based on your body stats, how you sleep and what you like. Here's how it works. Simply visit our website, fill out a quick questionnaire, tell us about your current pillow, what you like, what you didn't like about it, then answer a few questions about your personal preferences, then all of your data runs through our algorithm, helping us create the perfect pillow for you. Our modular design allows us to create over 35 possible variations through our innovative process. The best part, while there are a ton of pillows out there, nobody else does this. Even better, our customers love us. So sharks, before you hit snooze, which one of you will join us in helping everyone get a good night's sleep? Mm -hmm. All right, sharks, um, right in front of you in those really cool boxes are your very own custom Pluto pillows. Now we had to do some research to figure out what we should craft for you. We think these make great starting out points. So Mark, word around the league is that you prefer fill pillows over foam pillows and you like your pillows to be really soft. So we made sure to craft that squishy, for you. Squishy, squishy, squishy. I nice. like my pillows squishy. Daniel, we heard <laughs> how important it is for your sleep products to be hypoallergenic. The good news is all of our pillows are. We crafted a pillow for you that's both light and soft. Mr. Wonderful, we heard that you prefer fill pillows over foam pillows, so we made one for you that's just that, but one that never flattens. Lori, you tend to heat up at night and you like more of a medium firmness level. And lastly, Robert, lucky you, you're exactly the same as Mr. Wonderful. Both of you love thick, plushy, filled pillows. Yours is a quilted cover while Kevin's is a smooth. So sharks, enjoy your out of this world Pluto pillow. Susanna, I have a question. I always assumed that there was actually a better pillow for everyone. Are you saying that that's not the case, that really, truly there is no scientific best for everybody? There isn't, so we take your body stats, sleep positions and preferences, so we know that like, let's say if you're a side sleeper, you need that like neck support for the neck to shoulder tip ratio. Whereas like a stomach sleeper, it's better if you sleep on a flat pillow. But besides that, we also have empirical evidence. We have over 1.5 million data points that we take into account of like what makes a great pillow for you. What do you mean by those 1.5 million data points? So we have an algorithm on our site that every time anyone goes on our website, orders a pillow, we store this information and then we look at other people who answer similarly to that person. And then we see like exactly what kind of pillow would be best for them with this data point. And this has actually led to a very low return rate compared to the industry average. The industry average is 12.95%, while ours is sub 8%. And we did this in two years. Break down the numbers for me. 2018, 197K when we first started. 2019, 473K. And this year so far is 490K. There you go. Wow. What's the average sales price? We sell our standard sizes for 95. How are you manufacturing? So how this works is if you guys open up your pillows, inside there's actually a foam core and it's surrounded by a plush outer cover. So there's these two main parts. And through our questionnaire, when it goes to our algorithm, the computer actually decides like, hey, this person needs this foam with that plush cover. So, so someone's whoever's... in the facility picking, yes, putting together, Yes, they just together, pick it, put it together packing. and box it. Just two components and variations of those two components? Yeah, two components make over 35 variations that feel really different. One pillow, you sell it at $95. Yes. And then what does it cost you, including fulfillment, and what is your, what do you have left? So $95, $18 shipping, and it costs us $25 to $30 to make the pillow. 
So forty-three dollars. So, so you only have half, about fifty percent margin. Yes. So with that, it's fifty to sixty, just cost of goods sold. So that's not a big ratio. Yeah, it difference. sounds like your Normally gross margin structure is not so good. Is there a reason why? Because no matter how much you grow, if your gross margin out the gate is bad, you're just compounding the problems. So why are your gross margins not yeah, healthy? And that's enough? why, with like, if we could have a bigger size warehouse to order more materials, we can get that down to 20 to $25 instead of 25 to 30. You're talking about a few dollars, like $18 of your cost is shipping. Right. Tell me a little bit about the back end operations. How big is the team? So before this year, it was actually just us two. We boxed every pillow. We answered we all the everything. customer You guys emails. did all the boxing in the warehouse? All yeah. the boxing all in the it. warehouse. And then okay, we and reached now? out to press. And now we have, we hired two pillow builders. Um, we have <laughs> pillow builders. Yeah, and we have someone who is full time on customer service. I want to share with you a few things, my thoughts. While you're picking something smart because pillows are great and everybody needs pillows, it's also an extremely competitive space. And I just think the combination of that along with your valuation, just not the right investment for me. I'm sorry, I'm out. Thank you very much, Thank Lori. You, Lori. Yes. Guys, you guys are, are super impressive. I think Lori makes a really good point about how competitive that industry is. Yes, but nobody does what we're doing in terms of taking body stats, sleep positions, and preferences into account. And we have a utility patent pending. We have over 1.5 million data points. You have a utility patent pending on yes, what? On the way we make the polls combined with the algorithm. And we have over really? 1.5 million data points that no other company has in terms of like evidence on like what makes a good pillow. We did all the hard work already, right? We already established a brand, we already haven't. created a product. Guys, guys, you have it. So here, I'm guessing you're using machine learning because it's linear, yeah. right? 1.5 million data points is nothing. But you actually have kind of dropped the ball and I can tell by your answers. Because the better approach is to say, based off my data points, including my orders, I can build in anticipation of what will be ordered and will they'll be ordered from, because you already know, based off your machine learning algorithms, how many orders are going to take place from this part of the country, that part of the country, this part of the country, that part of the country, right? I'm saying all this because I don't think you've gone through that whole process yet, right? And I don't think you're fully aware of all the things you're going to have to go through yet to get there. So for those reasons, I'm out. I love pillows, I'm obsessive about pillows, but you know, this word of algorithm, everybody talks about how they have an algorithm and, and I'm not 100% sure that nobody else can do that. I don't think this is where I'm gonna sleep comfortably, so I'm out. Thank you very Thank much, you, Daniel. Daniel. If this had been for a lower amount of capital risk, I would have probably done it just for the talent, but you guys are, are too small for eight million bucks. I'm out. Thank you, Kevin. I have to tell you, when you came out here and you started talking about pillows, I was bored out of my mind. I couldn't have been less interested, but you sold me. And I think there's a couple of big problems. To Mark's point, your algorithm, it's not predictive. You've got to know what the potential orders are going to be before you get them. And I think you'll start getting that once you get the volume. Yeah. But come on. Who up here knew everything about their business and didn't make those mistakes? So at the end of the day, it's not about the mistakes you're making, it's about my confidence in your ability to overcome them. And you've sold me on that. So I like it all. Hate the valuation. Hate the valuation. Don't let that get in your way, Robert. <laughs> so I was being quiet with my own algorithm and saying, what number would make me feel comfortable <laughs> sleeping at night. Four sharks are out, but Robert is interested in Kevin and Susanna's custom-built pillow company, Pluto. What number would make me feel comfortable <laughs> sleeping at night. So you're looking for 400,000 for 5%. I'm thinking 400,000 for 20%. Ichi wawa karamba. It's aggressive, but your ask was very aggressive. It's amount I feel comfortable with, but I think it's one of those things. You won't need more money. You're gonna need more expertise and more ways to get out there faster. It's an offer, you got a Shark Tank offer. 
go. So, 10. I think that's just a little bit high. Would you be able to go down to 9% or 400,000? No, I'm not going to come down that much. I mean, would I go down to 19, 19 and a half, some marginal amount? Sure, maybe, if you could convince me. But I think it's a lot of money. It really is. Yep. And it's a lot of my time. And I do think you're one of these investments we're going to look back on and say, wow, yep. Pluto went to the moon. I think 19 is just a little bit too much. We've seen triple digit growth year over year since we started, and we feel like there's not really much in our way to keep growing. We do want some expertise. Stick to your guns, and some guys. Stick to your guns. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with sticking to your guns. I yeah, disagree, so guys. He could help you a lot. Stick Everything to your guns, for me guys. is a matter of investment and risk. And I think at 20%, I'm deeply invested. What do you want to do? Let's shoot for the stars. Thank you so much for the offer, Robert. But I think 19, 20% is just a little bit too much. I think we can't really go more than 10% for $400,000. I, I can't get there. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Robert. Guys, good Thank luck. You so Congrats, much. guys, and good luck. Thank you. Well Thank done. Thank you very guys. much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. While we're so flattered by Robert's offer, we felt we were worth way more than what he was offering, and we feel that we could still grow this company ourselves. Next into the tank is a product designed to make a dreadful household chore easier. Sharks. I'm Lola, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm here asking for $150,000 for 10% of my business, Bedley. Sharks, let's face it, the duvet cover struggle is real. It's definitely one of the most frustrating tasks ever. First, you may have to crawl your way into your cover. <laughs> After that, trying to line up all four corners well, somehow getting out of this maze is beyond me. Now you're lost, confused, disoriented, <laughs> and almost cannot breathe. And when you finally make it out alive, you're left jumping up and down on your bed in hopes that your comforter will magically line up. <laughs> All of this sweat and hassle, making your bed does not have to be challenging, complicated, or stressful. There's got to be a better way. That's why I created the easiest, fastest, and most user-friendly duvet cover ever known. Introducing the Bedley. Our signature innovative duvet cover has a three-sided opening that makes inserting or removing your duvet a breeze like never before. Simply unzip the three sides, place your duvet on top, straighten things out. The Bedley duvet cover is just very easy to use. Even a child can handle it. And sharks, no need for crawling inside. So now, she's gonna zip the duvet cover up using our signature nylon zipper. Zip, zip, zip. So no more stuffing, shoving, or, you know, duvet gymnastics. Uh, With Bedley, it's Yay. so easy. Think about how much time you saved and what you can do with that precious time. So sharks, who's ready to zip up this deal with me and bring Bedley to bed everywhere? <laughs> I have samples for you. Robert. Thank you very much, Lola. You're welcome. Glory. Thank you. Mr. Wonderful is getting wise. He is pure as the driven He's snow. He's pure, yeah. Thank and you. Damon. Thank you. And Mark. Thank you, Lola. Thank you. Appreciate it. So you sharks may not know the difference between a blanket and a duvet. Let me explain the difference. <laughs> well, Mark doesn't. I well. certainly do oh, not. Really the duvet was first made popular in the French courts Thank you so much. in Versailles. Mm -hmm. It is a down-filled large pillow. And so the duvet cover allowed them to not have to wash the down every time they had to wash just the cover. And so duvets became immensely popular with royalty all around the world. What years were those? These are back in the 1400s. How old were you back when you were in high school? <laughs> because I am a duvet expert. 
Lola, it looked complicated, even when she no. did it. No, no that was easy. That, that was gets very it. easy. It's not complicated. How at would all. I? How would I know that from looking at the yeah, packaging? Yeah, that's what I'm, gonna be yeah. my question. Like, if I'm in the store, okay. or do you only sell this online today? Oh, right now, just online. So you have a video demonstrating what we just saw on how the website. I? Yeah, on absolutely. The website? Yeah, because absolutely. otherwise, why would I know the difference between this? Yeah, because this? it's a demonstrable. Yeah, like it's how would, I wouldn't have product. known to do that. So when you pick that up on the retail shelf, you look at that, hopefully you look at that label, and it tells you it has a three-sided opening. Weird. It's hard to know that though, Lola, oh, from okay. looking at it. Yeah, I wouldn't. Because it's very small in the that. representation, okay. and you don't have anything there that says that. Okay. Well, Lola, well, we'll tell us about you. Okay, so what's your background? So, equipped with a degree in chemistry and physics, I'm originally from Nigeria, so I, I immigrated to the U.S. I ended up getting a job in uh, investment banking on the technology side. And then, while working full-time, I went to Colombia and got my MBA. I've always had this entrepreneurial yearning, so I'm brainstorming. What ideas can I, you know, what can I... So then I'm like, every time I have to wash my duvet cover, for a king-size bed, it's a pain. And I'm not a lazy person, but that was the one thing I did not like doing. I'm like, no, this has got to stop. There's got to be a solution to this. So I looked, I didn't find it. So I decided I'm going to make one. Everybody has this problem yeah. if yeah. they've ever changed their duvet cover. Exactly. Okay. So what does it cost you to make it? And what the units that you sold, what did you sell them at? Right now, it's made in the US. Okay. So our costs are very high, and I know I can get that down drastically. Okay, what are the costs? So right now, it's 5750 To make? And we sell, yes, on average. And I know I can get this down. Sure. And you sell it that. for what? 140, 130, 140, average. Well, what are your sales? Since... Okay, so I'm gonna preface that with, do not judge me by my sales. Don't, okay? don't, and don't Lola, let me know. Right. Lola, are you sure? We you promise you we will show. not judge you by your sales. I am going to judge you by your sales. $150,000 for 10% imputes, a million and a half dollar valuation, because you're an investment banker, you know that. I know, okay, I know so... that. But you know what? I wasn't gonna let Sales that are not going to be pleasing to you. They're not. Stop me from uh -oh. getting here. Uh -oh. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll just tell you the sales. So our revenue from 2018, because that was when we really started to sell. Before that, it was just a few here and there. Just for last year, what were the sales? $28,000. Uh oh. Yeah, That's amazing. Yeah. Uh -oh. I mean, thank you. We're not impressed. Okay, Lola, we don't live in the past. Thank you. We do not live in the okay. past. Okay, and so this so year... 2019 year to date. Yeah. 2019 year to date is about 12,000. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Now we're judging you. Now we're Listen judging you. This is important. There's a don't few... you suck on the number. Listen to me. Lola, <laughs> your sales... <laughs> <laughs> sales suck. Your sales suck. It's okay. I've been bootstrapping. On this, I've spent like $91,000. All my own money. And because my budget was so limited, it wasn't gonna stop me. So I, I hustled. You didn't hustle enough. Why do you Lola, think you didn't sell more? I haven't been doing a lot of marketing. Tell you what I've done. Right now we have this um, in a Macy's pop-up shop. And I've been talking to You're in Macy's? QVC With and they like it enough to put it on there. Yeah. With this packaging. Pop-up shop, yeah. At two locations. Lola, this is a quality product. But for me, respectfully, it's not a product for me, but I wish you the best. I'm sorry, I'm out. Lola, you deserve a ton of credit, right? Thank you. you, you what you've accomplished is amazing. Your relentlessness is amazing. Thank Your you. sales, not so much. Yeah. Right? But, but it's telling you something. Honestly, I'm not a marketing expert, but I said, I'm not gonna stop, you know? You've got $91,000 of yeah. your own money that you've spent. You don't yeah. have enough money for marketing. You know, I don't want to keep saying this, but it is what it is. I haven't been able to give this product the brand awareness that it deserves. Most of our customers, they find this on right, Google, but, you know, and you they know, don't even search for long. Marketing is really a black hole. If you don't figure it out now, mm -hmm. how are you going to figure it out with the money? What do you expect to, to come out But I've learned a lot, I've seen a lot, and then I can also have, I need help. I, I can get help. I think it's a genius idea. You know, you're doing something that's very important. You're saving people time, right? And that's a lot of times why people purchase something. I just don't think you've figured it out yet. Uh, so I'm out. Oh, okay. Lola, Thank I, you. Um, 
There's a great saying, I forget where I saw it. Every time you see somebody with a small business, yeah. somebody made a courageous decision. Yes. So I admire your courage. Thank you. You are in love with the romantic idea of starting a business, but my money's got to go somewhere in order to get back an investment. Okay. And today, you didn't do a good job of presenting that. Oh, I'm wow. sorry. I'm out. Lola, you're going through the same thing a lot of entrepreneurs go through. Okay. Where they have a great product, and they say to themselves, well, I can't really sell a lot of them. It must be, I mean, I don't have enough money for marketing. And if I only had more money for marketing, I could build a brand. And if I build a brand, then everybody will come rushing to me and buy it. Except that never works. Marketing dollars never build brands. Product satisfaction and execution build brands. I don't think you've got I've to figure it out. I've been working hard on this. I've That's, been working. Who does I got it into Everybody Macy's. Who does it? Lola. Everybody I got it does. into Macy's. Who I does got it? QVC interested. <laughs> Lola, self-awareness is key for every entrepreneur. Yeah, absolutely. We all lie to ourselves, yeah. some more than others. You're in the more category right now. You've got to get to the less category. I'm out. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Kevin. Kevin didn't speak. And then there is Kevin. That's shocking, too. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Never. No. <laughs> I'm out. Okay. Good luck, Thank Lola. you. Good luck, Thank you, guys. Lola. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think the sharks were hung up on my sales numbers, but I know that all I need is just one breakthrough, and I can push this into the millions. This woman has an MBA. She got an MBA. Are you saying that in a good way or a bad yeah, way? I'm, saying a good way or I was, that... I'm not a fan of MBAs anymore. You know, I got to tell you guys something. We've been together 10 years, and it's 11. the first time ever in Shark Tank history I was speechless. All I could think of was no. <laughs> First in the tank is a product to help kids sleep more soundly. Hi. Hi. Hi, Sharks. I'm Katie, and this is my mom, Lou. We're from Atlanta, Georgia, and we're here seeking $400,000 in exchange for 20% of our company, Slumber Pod. Traveling with your kiddos can be crazy stressful. Whether you're in a hotel room or crashing at grandma's, it can be a nightmare to share a room with a little one. Many babies need total darkness to sleep well. Parents often resort to crazy stuff, like building dangerous homemade forts. <laughs> what is that mother doing? Those what? Chopper cables? <laughs> or if things really start to get crazy, taping aluminum foil to the windows. Parents don't deserve to be <laughs> sleep deprived and miserable on trips. So we decided to kick those sleepless nights to the curb and create our own easy solution. Slumber Pod! Yay! <laughs> it's a portable privacy pod that gives your baby its own dark and private place to sleep. It's a tent. Once your slumber pod is assembled, simply slide it over your travel crib and just like that, <laughs> sleep is moments away. Poor little thing. Designed with your baby's safety in mind, it's made of breathable oh, fabric. It weighs. It's just not having it. Slumber Pot is made of breathable fabric. It weighs less than six pounds. And best of all, it fits in carry-on luggage. Our customers call our product a lifesaver, a game changer, and a marriage saver. I don't know. <laughs> Sharks don't sleep on this amazing opportunity. Oh. So who's ready to join us in creating more Nighty Nights? <laughs> Next time, use a fake Let baby. Let the child <laughs> out. <laughs> Oh. All right, Oscar. It's okay. Good night, oh, Oscar. Gosh, great job. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Those are real tears, damn it. Real tears. Believe it or not, Oscar actually sleeps in this every night at home. He's just having a little stage anxiety. Thank so, you. Bye. Bye, Oscar. The slumber prison costs how much? What do you sell it for? <laughs> slumber prison. We sell for 
and the landed cost is $56. Lou, how did you come up with the idea of a tent for children? So when I was home for the Christmas holidays when my oldest daughter was a year and a half, we had to stay in the same room with her. That room didn't have great window treatment, so some light was coming mm. through, and she kept waking up in the night, seeing us across the room, and not understanding that she needed to stay in the bed and that it wasn't time to wake up. I think we got two or three hours of sleep a night, two nights in a row, to the point where we went home a day early. Like, sleep deprivation is a military torture tactic because it makes you miserable and crazy, Sword right? twins. Yeah, that's a good point also. <laughs> How long will it take you to put it back in a box? Breaking it down probably takes two minutes or less and then putting in the bag another 30 seconds. Unless you have the pack and play, otherwise the child crawls out from under it. That's a great question, Barbara. So it also fits a toddler cot inside or you could make a pallet on the floor out of blankets. It's not designed to confine a child. It's designed to create a dark and private sleep environment. It looks really complicated. Their instructions sewn right into the bag is simple as setting up a camping tent. And, you know, it may look a little bit um, cumbersome, Scary. but what you make up for that is in how small it gets. That's what allows it to fit and carry on luggage. Have you started selling them? How yes. much are your sales? We launched in August, and then this year we've done 556,000. That's wow. really good. What a surprise. How and why, why did it take off? Lou? Because um, moms are obsessed. They love to talk about things that work, and they love to put it on Instagram. No advertising. Um, we've done very limited advertising. So you guys have got to be just so profitable and just generating cash, printing money. We became profitable in February. Uh, we have no debt. What is your background? Tell us about you. I actually went back to college as a single mom at 39 Good years old. Good for you. And got my wow. uh, master's degree at 50. Um, and I've worked for Fortune 500 and small software companies. Um, so that's my background. How about you, Katie? And she's also a mom to six kids, and I'm the oldest oh of my those gosh. kids. I'm in the automotive space currently, and I'm a mom to three. I have three-year-old twins. So I think about sometimes if I had given away a percentage of my business, would it have been right for me? Or was it better that I had to figure out everything and do it myself, which made me stronger, smarter, better, and not a one-person company anymore? I don't say this often, but I think you should continue to do what you're doing because I truly believe that I'm going to go out. Thank Obviously, you. we have mixed feelings about that response, <laughs> but thank you. I want to add to Lori's story, if I may, uh, because something happened to me that was a real lesson in my career. I was in a terrible real estate recession. I owed the whole world so much money. And as luck would have it, Merrill Lynch came and offered to buy my business. They offered me $250,000. But here's what happened. They changed their mind. And I thought the sky had fallen. And do you know, it was only five years later I sold my business for $66 million. To Lori's valid point, be careful when you sell your stock. But that being said, I want to take advantage of you. One shark is out. But Barbara may be interested in Lou and Katie's child's sleeping tent, Slumber Pod. Be careful when you sell your stock. But that being said, I want to take advantage of you. <laughs> That's the truth. She's nothing if not honest, right? So I'm going to offer you $400,000 for 25%. But I have one contingency. I don't want to wait forever to be paid back. Every time you sell something, you name the number. I just want some kind of a payment so that I know I'm getting paid back first. Get that money out. But I'll be a terrific partner. Well, Katie and, and I Lou, I'm going to put some to pressure answer, on Barbara. Wait, and I need you to answer me. 25 percent. That's a savage offer and greedy, and I don't like that. That's not I just, greedy I at don't, all. I do not appreciate that kind of greed. I'm going to loan you $400,000 at 9 percent for three years. That'll cover all your inventory costs, and I'm going to take 7 percent equity for that loan. You're getting a bidding war going here. Oh, there's just uh, greed and reason on, reasonableness. Barbara made you a really fair offer. I would have made a more aggressive offer. I'm out. Thank you. We have Guys, I'm a, you in? I'm going to share a story similar to Barbara's. When we had started Broadcast.com as AudioNet, and we were the first streaming company in the country, and Microsoft got into that business, and Microsoft invited us up, and we started talking about an offer. And to Barb's point, 
we thought we were right there for an offer that was going to be for $75 million. God, Didn't better get than that my offer. story. Didn't get that offer. But two years later, we sold for $5.7 billion. Because we didn't take that offer, I'm out. This is more than money. We're looking for someone to help us scale. Exactly. We're looking for those relationships. Well, once the sharks don't have you to give a check, they up. want to help you. Of course they want you to be successful. Yeah. Barbara, would you do our original deal? Yeah, I would. Let's do it. We'll do it. Yeah. Woo! Congratulations. Congratulations. Come give me a hug. I'm coming, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you really wanted to squeeze you on the money, but you're too nice. Oh, <laughs> I did. Thank what you. a nice job you did. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, ladies. ladies. Biggest sale ever done in pajamas. <laughs> Making a deal with Barbara, it's a dream come true. She is a female shark, which is what we were hoping for, and she just seems like she'll be an incredible partner. And to be able to grow our business together with my daughter is a dream come true.